Hello and welcome to another Ask Narita Joy video. I have my model Kelly here today and you are all very familiar with her. We have been following her progress. This is Kelly's third time being filmed here. I did see Kelly only a week ago to do a little extraction on her. Her very first time I did extractions on her, it took me two hours almost, <laughs> an hour and a half, and we couldn't even get to the blackheads. And now I think, did we spend maybe 20 minutes getting everything just this last week? It is a very different treatment we're doing on Kelly today. She is, I'm actually gonna be doing a peel on her, a chemical peel. And what the chemical peel is going to do is it's going to really help with some of her scarring. She still gets her occasional nodule on her face, um, her painful monthly nodule, but her skin quality is just completely different. It is so smooth to the touch. It was not anything like this before. So it, uh, so we're going to do a peel just to help with this scarring and really help to, uh, to work on the, the scarring that she has here on her cheeks. So that's what we're going to do. And her skin is so smooth. It's, it's just really pretty. <laughs> so we're going to cleanse her skin off here first. I'm using the K cleanser and it's a non-foaming gel. I do not like foaming cleansers, as you all know. So we're using the non-foaming gel just to cleanse her skin off. It is such a different skin, Kelly's skin, from when we first started. I know her mother used to say, what did you say, the rocky road or something? Mm -hmm. Bumpy mountain. The bumpy mountain. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just so smooth and so clean and her pore size is so great. And we've got a really, really, a really pretty, a really healthy skin. She's just got her monthly breakout here, she mentioned when she came in, but she's been doing really good on her regimen and her skin looks great. So we are going to do a peel. Now, when I do a peel, I don't like to do a full facial when I'm doing a peel. What's great is that when you are doing a peel that you've really cleaned the skin well and you've prepped it for the peel. So it is important to prep a skin before you go and do a chemical peel. And the skin has been prepped, it's been cleaned, it's been extracted, where she really doesn't have the breakouts that she was having. So that's the other thing when you go to do a peel, you don't want to have pustules and papules on the skin. You want, it, you want it to be a really clean skin where it's no longer, she no longer has those really major breakouts and she has no bumps under her skin whatsoever, which is what she used to have because she did, uh, she was eating a lot of dairy and now her diet's changed. She's not eating dairy and there is not one bump on her face, which is amazing. I'm touching it here going, oh my God, this is amazing. So it, her pore size is great. And uh, so we're really at that stage, why the peel is important now is it's just going to really help with her scarring on her cheeks and it's minimal. She doesn't have a lot. So we're just going to uh, do the treatment that will now work with her scarring. So we're going to remove the cleanser. We just cleansed off her skin. She has no bumps on her skin. If you would have seen her skin up close when I first saw her, there was nothing but bumps. And that's all because of her diet. She was eating a lot of dairy. She was eating egg yolks. And I think she was having soy as well in her diet. So all of those are no-nos. And since she's stopped that, she has had no bumps since then. Her skin is really clean and it's ready for the peel today. So the one thing, when you start working with skin, it's to have a skin that's had acne, to have it look away in a way that you see them so many months down, down the line and you look at them and just sort of look at their skin and would never know there's no sign that she ever had acne. That is what we want to achieve. We want her skin to be really healthy and pretty and you get to a place where you look at her and say, there is no way, Kelly, you had acne. Because that is after the peel in, in another month, you're going to see, you're going to look at her and say, there is no way that was your skin three months ago when we first started. And that's what's so wonderful about what we do is if you go too deep too quickly, then you, you, you form scar tissue forms. And 
the skin doesn't look as healthy and pretty and you can see that they had scarring and you can see that they had acne but if you work really slowly and you do it with with a really good home care a really good home care regimen which is what she's been using at home then in a few months you can have a skin that was just really crazy bumpy with acne everywhere to be a beautiful skin where you've never you would never know she ever even had acne and that's just through changing Kelly's diet and with her using regular products at home that are right for her skin. So that's really important, is being able to diagnose skin and understand the importance of her home care regimen, that she's using the right products, because you don't need to use a lot of product, but what you do use has to be very specific for her skin condition. So it's really important that the products that she use are right. And that's why skin diagnosis is so important. So we've cleansed Kelly's skin with the non-foaming gel cleanser. Now I'm just using an exfoliant. This again is, as I said, oh, if you could just feel her skin, how great it feels and how smooth her skin feels. It is so rewarding for me to see someone's skin improve the way that it has, Kelly's skin has improved. It's so wonderful. So we're just doing a little exfoliation on here. This is an exfoliant that has a papaya enzyme. It has a little lemon peel powder and it has a little glycolic. So she is going to feel some tingling. Okay, so we've left the exfoliating mask on Kelly's skin for a couple of minutes. And I'm just going to remove it now with my four by four, my very soft cotton. I, um, I also like to use sponges, but the cotton is, uh, is really soft and so sometimes it's really nice when I'm doing certain procedures on the skin, I like to use the cotton. Mm -hmm. I'm like so excited. You're so excited? Yeah. Oh my God, your skin looks so great. Dad always wanted to wear like tinted moisturizers. Yes. But like now I can. I'm excited too because I know the results you're going to get are going to be so great and your skin is so smooth and it looks really great. So we've just done the, um, the exfoliator on you. Now, did you say you were gonna be wearing some tinted? Yeah, I always wanted to wear tinted moisturizer and now like I can. Now you can wear it. Yeah. yeah, it's so wonderful, isn't it? When you don't have to wear really heavy, thick makeup to cover. Her skin looks so great. I don't so even like it anymore. You don't like it? Wow. See, because it's so pretty. Your skin is so pretty. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the, uh, we're going to start with the peeling procedure. So I've cleansed off her skin. I've done the exfoliant on her skin. And this is, her skin is really clean. It's ready for the peel. So the first step is going to be a pre-peel solution that's going to be going on her skin. And this is a pre-peel solution. I, I use this so I'm, I don't want to do a really super strong chemical peel on her. I just want it to be a medium peel and the pre-peel will stop it from being really, really strong. So this is what we're going to put on next. Her skin is really clean and I'm going to put the pre-peel solution on. I'm going to wait for it to dry for a minute once we, I've made my, my little cotton balls here myself, my two cotton, uh, Q-tips together with a little cotton on the end and I, I use it uh, like this because um, sometimes the, the really big ones that you buy they just they absorb so much and I feel like oh I'm wasting too much. <laughs> okay so we're going to put this pre-peel solution all over Kelly's skin. It doesn't sting at all this one. You want to make sure when you're putting it on, and you can see the skin is wet where I'm putting it, you want to make sure you cover all the skin because if you don't cover all the skin and you put a little bit of the peeling solution on an area that did not have the pre-peel, it is going to be stronger on that area. So you want to make sure that you really coat every little part of her skin. It's strong. It smells strong. Yeah. yeah, it does have a strong smell, but it doesn't really sting. Right. <coughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so it has a strong smell. We've, um, Kelly's told us to, it smells strong. So you might want to air it a little bit before we get to the nose area again. And, and this is just stopping it from being a really strong chemical peel. Okay, so we're going to leave that to dry for a couple of minutes. So Kelly has the pre-peel solution on her skin. We've left it on a couple of minutes. 
it is important to put the pre-peel solution on to stop the chemical peel that I'm going to do next to be really, really strong. I don't want to do a really strong peel on her, number one, because she doesn't need it, and it, uh, it's just not necessary. Okay, so we're going to start with the peeling formula. I've poured the peeling formula into a little container because I am going to be discarding what I don't use of this, so I'm going to be constantly double dipping. So as we go around, you're going to notice that her skin is going to blanch a little bit. I'm probably going to do about six or eight coats of the peel on her skin, and we're going to start here. Now I'm going to start on the cheeks. You want to make sure whenever you're handling anything like a peel that you're not moving the Q-tip over her eyes. Just in case something falls off the Q-tip, you want to make sure that it doesn't go in her eyes. And I am going to ask her to close her eyes anyway, if you don't. So this also has a very strong smell. And you want to make sure that if you're going around the nose area, you want to make sure that you give her a little time to breathe so that it, uh, the smell, the stink, is, uh, she has, can get a good whiff of some good fresh air in between here. It's pretty strong, that's for sure. <laughs> it has a strong smell. Okay, so we've got one coat of the, pre of the peel on Kelly's skin right now. And we've got to wait for that to dry for a minute. So it's, uh, it's nice if you have a little fan, you can um, dry it off. Sometimes if you have it um, blowing too much, it dries up the alcohol in the product. So I don't like to, um, to fan it too much when it's drying in between the coats. So we are going to uh, just let it dry for a minute. And you're gonna to start to see that her skin is gonna to start to blanch. I'm not going to do all the coats that I will be doing on the cheeks. I'm going to go heavy on the cheeks where she has scarring, but I'm only going to do maybe two more coats on her forehead and not so much on the nose area, but we're going to do a lot more on the cheek area. And when, when a client's face starts to peel after they've had the peeling formula on the skin, it doesn't peel all at the same time. So usually the areas where she will peel fastest will be around the mouth area and around the eyes. And then she's got the cheeks and the forehead will be the, the later areas where she'll start to peel. This peel takes about five to seven days to peel. Her skin tomorrow is going to look fine. She might start to look a little slightly bit tanned. Uh, the day, the third day, her skin is going to start to get tight and it's going to start to look a little wrinkly. And the most uncomfortable is that when you go to drink or you go to eat, that the mouth, you know, it's a little uncomfortable around the mouth area because the skin gets tight. I always say it's very important that you do not peel with your fingers. You do not help it to peel because that way you can cause scarring if you're peeling off pieces before it's supposed to come off. So it's really important that you don't, um, don't help it peel. So we're going to apply coat number two right now with the, pre the peeling formula. So that's going to be the last coat we put on that nose area. So we're going to do about six to eight coats on Kelly's skin. I've done the second one right now. I'm not going to do any more on her nose area. I'm going to do just one more on her forehead and the rest we're going to be very, uh, we're going to do the majority of the coats on those cheeks where she has very minimal scarring now because her home care has really helped improve her scarring so much already that we're really just going to be doing, um, it's, it's just, she's going to look like she's never had acne. So in one month, I can't wait for you all to see her skin because her skin's going to be even more amazing than it is right now. So we're just waiting a couple of minutes again for the peel to, um, to dry a little bit before I put the next coat on her skin. You can see she's just very slightly starting to blanch on those cheeks.
And as I said, it's okay to use a little bit of a fan. I'm not using one here today, but it is okay to use a little bit of it. It's just if you use it constantly, it, um, it, it dries up the alcohol in the product quickly, and I don't want to do that. So we, uh, we have to just sort of wait a little bit in between for it to dry. You can see she's starting to get red. So we're going back to the cheek area. This is now coat number three and we're going to start going very, uh, very much stronger on this cheek area where she's, uh, this is also going to help with her breakouts. Like even though it's a monthly breakout, it's really just going to help. I'm going under her chin. I don't really want to do any more on her chin. Um, her skin is really pretty and you don't just do peels for the sake of peels, you know, just doing a peel on somebody. Peels are for a reason and I like to use them when I'm working on a skin that has a little bit of scarring or really large pores that you want to help shrink the pore size to. So we're, um, we're using it just to help with her scarring and her pore size already is great. Her home care regimen, she's been really diligent with that. She's been very good with her diet. I can see she's really, she's not having dairy anymore. Her skin is completely different. She doesn't have any bumps under her skin. It's really terrific. So Kelly's home care regimen, while we're waiting for this third coat to dry, is going to be very simple. She's going to be just using a non-foaming gel cleanser and the healing gel. And that's all she's going to be using for the next three or four days until her skin starts to peel. So it, uh, it just will make a, a big difference for her. And if you, you don't want to moisturize it, you want her skin to peel because that's what really gets great results when you have scarring is you want the skin to physically peel off. So you don't want to be nourishing it you wanted to actually go through the, the process. And she can put healing gel on 10 times a day. It just, because as it starts to dry, it starts to get a little itchy. And you, you can just keep slathering healing gel on, which is your 97% aloe vera, just to help soothe it. And as I said before, you do not want to be helping it, peeling it off with your fingers. You want it to just naturally do its job. When, whenever you are doing peels, you want to make sure that your client has got her eyes closed. You want to make sure that when you're, you're using the peeling formula or any alpha hydroxy, anything that's strong, you want to make sure that you are not doing it directly across her eyes just in case some falls off your cotton and into the eye. You always want to work around the sides of her skin. That's really important and just be really conscious of that. And her skin's pretty much, it's going to be on, she's pretty much on fire right now, I would say. It's gonna be burning quite a lot. It's not always gonna feel like this. It gets to a, a place where it becomes almost a little bit numb. So as we go to apply the next coat, it will be, uh, it'll, she, she'll start, she'll still be burning for a little bit, but then it's, she's not gonna feel it the same. So this is now coat number four that we're putting on her skin. I want her cheeks to start blanching and to when I see it starting to get white, that means the skin is saturated and that's when we are going to stop. So I'm going to do one more coat on her forehead. I think we can do one more up there right now. So someone just asked what the ingredients were here with the, the, the peel that we're doing, the chemical peel, and, uh, and Kelly said, wasabi and fire with the ingredients. <laughs> so the peeling formula ingredients are lactic acid. It has papwen, which is the, um, the papaya enzyme. It also has resorcinol, it has salicylic acid and glycerin. So resorcinol is something that you cannot use on an African-American skin. So an African-American cannot have a chemical peel like this. It will really cause uh, a big problem for their pigment, melanocytes. It'll, it'll be um, tragic, actually. <laughs> so now we're doing coat number five, which is going to be, we're doing it, as I said, we're going to keep going here until we see her skin blanching. Okay, so she's, uh, so Kelly's skin is starting to blanch. You can see it's starting to get white. We've done five coats. It is um, blanching nicely. And we're probably just going to do one more coat on her, which will now make coat number six. You can see her skin is quite red. 
and this is all very normal uh, her skin will be starting to not sting as much because the skin has become very saturated and it becomes almost numb so uh, so it's not going to be soon she's not going to be able to be feeling it as much on her skin and what's in this um, peeling formula is the lactic acid it has a papyrus enzyme papwin it has resorcinol in it and this is a chemical peel it is not a chemical peel for an african-american skin a resorcinol is something that should not be used on african-american skin it can really upset the the melanocyte the cycle the tyrosinase cycle within a pigment cell so it's really important that this not be used on an african-american skin so this is coat number six of the the peeling formula that i'm putting on kelly's skin it's going to be the last coat i'm doing she started to blanch on her skin and that's what we want because that tells me that her skin is now saturated and that's going to, so this will be the last coat Again, make sure you are not putting the Q-tip anywhere near her eyes, that you are holding it away from there. It's very important that you stay very conscious of different solutions and that that you're using on your clients, that you never work with things directly over their eyes, just in case something spills and goes in their eye. nothing you feel nothing yeah so Kelly has just said to me with coat number six she feels nothing that means she <laughs> she her skin is numb as I mentioned earlier uh, it gets to a place where it does become numb and you don't feel the burning anymore and what's amazing is I cannot wait for you to see what her skin is going to look like in one month because from the first time which will actually be three months from the first time I saw Kelly her skin i think i met you actually here as a model didn't i as on the first day mm -hmm. i met i met her here on my table and we so it's three months it will be um next at the end of this month so the next shoot um right now it's uh, it's two months and her skin is already amazing but we really we're just really going to refine it where her skin is just going to be incredible so I can't wait for you to see I'm actually going to do one more on her forehead I'm looking at her forehead thinking will I and and she could we will do one more up here because I know it is going to shrink her pore size as well that's what peels do and um, it it's going to shrink her pore size but you know it's going to be really great for those cheeks where she has a little tiny bit of scarring still so we're just going to do one more up there And that's it. So as she said, she feels nothing. I'm going to leave this on her skin for a moment. When you go to take the peel off, there's not much going to come off, but I am going to be going over her skin shortly with some cool cotton and just get the excess off. I'm then going to be putting a mask on her skin, just a straight purifying mask. And it is just, uh, and while that mask is on, I'm going to ice her skin a little bit and then she's going to, I'm going to put treatment, uh, just the healing gel on her skin and she's going to go home. A few more minutes with this on. While this is on, I'm going to go grab the ice from the refrigerator and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so we've, um, Kelly, the peel, she's got six coats on her skin right now, the peeling formula. We did a pre-peel solution first so that it wasn't going to be a really super duper chemical peel. I do not like to do super duper chemical peels, mostly because it's just not necessary. Peels are not for wrinkles. They're not, they don't make a big difference for wrinkles. You are better to use alpha hydroxy acids and you know your, your complex of alpha hydroxy acids because that's what works best for wrinkles. Peels are great for acne. They're great for scarring. They're great for shrinking pore size. They help to dry up oil a little bit too. I mean, her skin in a month will, you'll see, will be quite extraordinary. So I just want, you know, a lot of people, they do peels on wrinkles and it's just, it, you know, does it make a difference? A, a very little difference, but it's not what you really want to do for wrinkles. You want to be consistently using alpha hydroxy acids. You want to be using alpha hydroxy acids and retinol because they stimulate the fibroblast cells 
and by stimulating the fibroblast cells, that's what keeps, that's the batteries to your collagen elastin fibers, that's what lessens the depth of a wrinkle. So I myself use retinols every night and I use alpha hydroxy acids every day. I never ever use and I never ever prescribe prescription strength retinols. They are just, to my understanding, not necessary. I want my clients to be able to use a retinol every night and not have dryness, not have redness and irritation to the skin. So it's really important that you use retinols. If you want your skin to to look good, to be strong, to have to lessen the depth of your wrinkles, to keep your pore size small, to keep your brown spots lighter, then you have to work with retinols and AHAs because that's what really makes a difference on the skin. And you know, of course, we have other wonderful brightening agents, but you you can, that you can work in with your regimen. But basically, retinols and AHAs they make a difference and a big difference on your skin. So now that the cloths are a little bit cool, we're going to remove Kelly's peel on her skin. You can see her skin is quite blanched and this is important that this is a great thing because this is what we want. She said just earlier that her skin, she doesn't feel anything anymore, that means her skin is numb, that's what happens when you do a peel. When I start, remove it a little bit with the cloth she will feel a little bit of tingling, her skin will be uh, slightly, um, slightly stingy, nothing like what she went through in the application of the peel. Tomorrow her skin is going to look great. It, um, it might be slightly pinkish uh, to a slight tan. I always say people when they've had a peel, two days after a peel, they look like they've been snow skiing where they've got like a little reddish brownish tan look to the face and that's what her skin's going to look like. It's going to look really good. I recommend that people until they start to physically peel to not work out and sweat. So to not go to the gym, don't do any heavy workouts where there is going to be sweating because nothing, the sweat will not be able to get out. The peel leaves a, a layer on the skin. So if you start sweating, you're going to get pimples underneath or little sweat pimples uh, underneath the, the layer of the peel. So right now uh, we're, we're just getting rid of the very outer layer of the peeling formula a little bit that was left on the skin and it just with a cool cloth for the next um, until she starts to physically peel she cannot work out she cannot go in a steamer steam or a, anything that's going to be too hot if she goes out in the sun and is out quite a bit in the sun she's going to feel it her skin is going to be more sensitive to the sun so it's important that she not be in the sun too much also and her home care regimen is just going to be the, the gel cleanser, the non-firming gel cleanser and the healing gel, which is a 97% aloe based gel. And that's all she's going to be using for the next few days. So now I'm going to put a mask on her skin. So now we've put the, the cool cloth on, her, on Kelly's skin just to remove the residue of the peel by adding water back to her face she just said too that her skin is a little stingy actually quite stingy it's um she's feeling it again like in the beginning when i was applying the mask and that's all very normal so i've uh, i put a clay mask on kelly's skin and we are i put gauze over top of it because i'm going to ice her skin the peel doing a peel on her skin i feel a lot of heat coming out of her skin so i want to calm her skin down uh, she has the purifying mask on underneath. When you go to put a mask on over top of the peel, the peel leaves a film on the skin that it takes a little bit of working the mask into the skin to, um, to get it on the skin. So now that we put gauze over top, I'm going to use two ice packs here and we're just going to, I'm going to ice her skin to take some of the heat out of her skin. I like to leave it on about 10 seconds and move it around her skin. I usually start from the bottom with the ice and work my way up. I, um, I love actually working with ice when I'm doing any treatments. If I do a lot of extractions on somebody and their skin is a little bit irritated from the extractions, once I put the mask on, I like to ice the skin. I really think ice is amazing how it works. It's very healing and it uh, obviously really calms things down very quickly. And sometimes when someone 
texts me and they say, oh my God, Nerida, I've got a pimple on my cheek. What can I do? I'm at home and I can't get over to see you. What can I do? I say, go get a little bit of ice and hold it on and do, hold it on for 10 seconds and then take it off and hold it on again and do that three times. And ice is just so great. It's, uh, it's really healing, really brings down inflammation. So if you get a nodule, if you have painful nodules coming up, icing the skin is really great. Okay, so we've iced Kelly's skin. Now I'm going to remove the gauze and remove the mask. Okay, so we have removed the mask from Kelly and she is quite pink. Uh, we're putting healing gel on her skin and this is going to be what she's gonna be using for the next few days and still, until her skin starts to physically peel. She's going to be just cleansing with her K cleanser, the end, which is a non-foaming gel cleanser, and she's going to be using her healing gel, and that's all she's going to be using. She's not going to be going out in the sun too much. I would prefer that people don't put too much makeup or anything on because the more you put on this, your skin, it's going to take longer to peel. So you really just want to keep it drier and not keep it coated with anything because you want it to peel quickly and you don't want it to be affected by anything during that time. So Kelly's skin is going to start peeling in about three or four days. The, the steps that she's going to go through is tomorrow her skin is just going to, it's going to actually look really good tomorrow. She might be a little bit pinkish her skin and coming into the next day it's going to be that reddish brownish like she's been snow skiing, she's got that sort of tannish look with her skin. Day number three her skin is going to start to tighten and possibly day two into day three, her skin's gonna start feeling tighter. And then day three and four is when she's going to look her worst. Um, day four, three into day four, possibly four into day five. She's going to be quite wrinkly and she's going to look older and her skin will not look so good. She won't be looking so, that will be her worst looking days is day four, day five and then she's going to start peeling during that time as well, which will be day four, day five, she's gonna start peeling. By day seven, she will pretty well be peeled off completely. The skin peels very quickly, it heals very quickly, it goes through this peeling, these peeling steps very quickly. The more she cleanses her skin, it's the only time I say to somebody, you can cleanse your skin several times a day, it doesn't matter. The only time I say to cleanse your skin more than twice a day is when you've had a peel because it's going to help your skin to peel quicker. So she could cleanse four or five times a day if she wanted to with the K, the, the non-foaming gel cleanser and put healing gel on 10, 15, 20 times a day if she wants to. But that is, that's all she's gonna be doing for the next few days until her skin physically has pretty well peeled off, which will be four or five days she'll be mostly peeled by day seven she'll be completely peeled and her skin will be looking pretty good but by day 10 her skin's going to be looking amazing so um so she's had a peel she's got healing gel on her skin right now i'm going to put another coat of it on her skin and then she's going to be going home So this is a second coat of the healing gel, which is that 97% aloe base gel. And she's gonna be going home. And now she's had her first peel. And I think, I think this will be all she'll need is just this one peel. And I can't wait to see what your skin looks like. Even in two weeks, um, I know it's, it's just gonna look great. But in a month when we're back here with the cameras rolling, it will be really fantastic. And I can't wait for you all to see. So thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you again in a month with and Kelly. And thank you for being so brave. We'll see you soon, bye bye.